welcome to the Off the Road Again podcast. I'm Chris. I'm Ross. Patrick. Uh, this is our show about anything and everything off road. I think I've referenced rally cards like the last six shows, and we still haven't got a guest that has anything to do with rally cars lined up. But you need to fix that. Well, maybe the next show. Ooh, yes. Hundred. Yeah. The last time I teased something on a show, that guest ghosted me. So I don't really okay, want to yeah. actually drop something. Uh, as always, we're socially distanced. We did it way before it was mandated, like six months to a year before it was mandated. Mm-hmm. Uh, I'm still in the Midwest, Russ on the Northeast, and Patrick's on the West Coast tonight. So we're, we've literally covered, we're just missing the mountain time zone. We've got it all. The best time zone. Coming at you from Venice, California. So if you hear the Ooh. helicopters, my apologies. <laughs> Choppers are, is that Coast Guard or Marine Corps? Uh, LAPD. And they always seem to be around. Oh. <laughs> yeah, there's regular Jeez. reports here, like man with sword two blocks away. See, but like that doesn't get described like Florida man does. Like a dude with a sword is the similar kind of insanity that we always see on the internet as Florida man. Why don't we get that? Yeah, you know, Florida man's maybe the whole state, and this is just this little like square mile <laughs> pocket of insanity. I mean, and it is like full insanity, but um, yeah, I don't know. I, maybe just start the uh, hashtag Venice man. Venice, ooh. hashtag Venice man. Start that one. Yeah, my senior year, no, yeah. junior year of college, there was campus lockdown because somebody had locked themselves in their room and their roommate with a. Um, What's the like four foot long is a katana sword? sword? Oh, okay. Not a broad, yeah, like a katana sword. And they were just like holding themselves hostage. It was like a Scottish claymore. Wait, they're holding themselves hostage with a sword? Themselves. Yeah. The roommate was like, dude, I just want to leave. And apparently, I mean, it sounds like acid may have been involved. So (laughs) did we go to college together? Because my freshman year roommate, went to the renaissance festival a lot and kept swords throughout our room so <laughs> to each their own i was a ready yeah well like i what you like the first phone call i made for like hey we're gonna live together for a year and i was like i'll bring a microwave and a refrigerator and he's like well i'll bring a sewing machine and i have an air pop popcorn maker and i was like okay both surprisingly useful yeah, I did. Yeah, I didn't have him sew anything for me. So we're good. okay. Never mind. Not useful at all. <laughs> Continue. So speaking of useful, we're gonna jump right into the news. Uh, it's been a while since we talked about Hummer EV. I don't even think we talked about. We did briefly talk about the SUV pictures because we did. I, the problem with that is somebody sent them to me like two weeks before they came out, and but we weren't allowed to talk about. It, and so I've already like my old dad brain just moves things through like it. Like yeah, no. they were. It was in the Hooniverse chat. They were is that where oh, oh I, I saw them before that too. Okay. Um uh but like I, I heard a phrase the other day, like I just drag stuff to trash. Like you do on your I was like, that's my memory. The, like I just the back the burner trash. is like, over. <laughs> we're in the age of just like uh, out of sight, yeah. not just out of mind, but like gone. So information uh, hum, overload. Hummer EV popped up in the news today because the nice global vice president of Buick, uh GMC and Hummer posted uh to Twitter. We got we got live action. Hunter Patrick, you you've seen this stuff. thing, right? Oh yeah. Okay. Well, now now we know what it looks like in motion on the road, and like the off roading little bit that it did, it spun the right rear wheel a little too much for my taste, which is one thing. But you can't get a scale for this thing because there's nothing to <laughs> reference it against. But I think we can all agree the uh, the crab walk is fucking terrifying. <laughs> It like looks it, like it's some sort of trick of the brain, you know. Right? It looks like, like an optical yeah. illusion. Yeah. You know what? It looks like you know the people have built cars that are either backwards or you know, you like the wrong end oh. steers. It it looks kind of like that. It's just speedy is speedy cop the lemons guy? Yeah. Oh god. It looks it looks when it's moving sideways, it looks like something that speedy cop built. It's not, like the it upside does. down convertible or stuff like that. Yeah. Yeah, like the airplane on the car body. Like, yeah, it just, I it looks that, like something a toy you had as a kid would do, but it's its real and it's going to be able to do that through traffic. How are they steering when they crab walk? Do you know what they're doing? I, we, we haven't seen inside yet to see, actually see what they're doing, but it to me, it looks like it's in a mode and he just turns the wheel because all four mm-hmm. wheels turn at once kind of thing. Right. So I'm assuming 
something through a touchscreen to engage crab mode. And then it's just through the steering wheel. I tend to agree because it, it's definitely not like a sharp or something where you have like, you know, levers wow. and you can just manipulate one axle or one side. I think it, I think it's just either crab walk mode or, you know, off-road something, something mode. And you turn right and it pivots the back axle and it turns the front axle and, and, you know, and scares all the children. The, the other comment we made, Patrick, was when it, when it's accelerating, it literally looks like it points the nose so hard that if you were to jam on the brakes, it would look like one of those little minivans that then does the whole front roll back <laughs> on to the, like, we just need to get some really thick bars over the top and that thing would roll right over. Also the hill. It's like a giant rolling stormtrooper helmet. Right? Yeah, it does. <laughs> Which, I mean, there's worse things, but like, I mean, bigger, better equipped stormtroopers is never a good thing. It still won't be able to aim. Ha ha. You have been watching. I have been watching. <laughs> <laughs> uh, on my lunch break. <laughs> nice. I still need to start it, but nice. I'm talking about the, the Bad Batch in case Very, anybody is. Oh, I haven't, I haven't watched that yet. I'm playing Way Catch. <laughs> oh, oh you, I'm, no. Jesus I'm Christ. saving Badge Batch. I'm yeah. watching Clone Wars. No, I'm you're catching Clone up. Clone Wars. Oh, I'm, I'm, I'm full in the Bad Batch, man. I got a 12 year old and a 14 year old. How is it? Yeah. I love it. I think it's a bit, uh, it's, uh, it's a little darker than your, your, your normal Star Wars cartoon, really? which is, yeah, yeah. Um, so I, some I of the Clone Wars that. stuff was kind of dark already. So if it's a yeah, little it's darker like that than same, that, like that same kind of, kind of sentiment, it's yeah. Mm -hmm. Like I'm when, cool with that. when the body flops and then the helmet rolls away, you're like, that dude just got decapitated. And we, yeah. I mean, Star Wars was never, exactly light after the first like the original trilogy yeah you know okay. yeah. anyways we're so off topic already let's talk yeah that's why they're guys. Say, i like the hunger i can't wait to see one on the road i i'm I i'm looking it. for there they will be around i i live in the heart of truck country somebody's gonna buy this thing because it's just gonna be dumb i still think the price point is an issue because they're like 90 to like what 110 isn't that right where they Dude. were also i'm wearing a star wars shirt just saw that yeah but how um, much to, how much does like a high-end pickup go for these days anyway like if you if you get an 70 80 yeah. you get it out if you get the platinum version that's kitted out what are, yeah. what are, you, what are you paying for that like a power boost limit is probably at mid 70s but, so yeah it's not uh, it's like 100 bucks more a month honestly realistically the thing that it's probably most comparable to and it, total opposite end of the spectrum is the Ram TRX, TRX, TRX whatever it's called, um, because it's just demonstration and excess. And that's $90,000. So it's right there know, with it. The people who can afford these things are going to afford them. Like the numbers aren't going to scare them away. I like it in gray. Or people who uh, aren't mm. can't afford them are going to get one anyway. Do you think you'll see one of those first or a Rivian first in your neighborhood in the Midwest? Oh, fuck. I hope it's a Rivian. Oh, my God. So, what do you think it'll be? We have uh, a Rivian uh, fixation on this show. I I, do. <laughs> <laughs> I I think it will be a Hummer. I hope it's a Rivian. Okay, okay. I think I, it'll be a Rivian. I I'm, I I bet it's. I think I'm technically closer to the Rivian plant than I am to Detroit. So, because <laughs> I think the Rivian plant's like normal Illinois. I think is where it is. Um. Yeah, but the Rivian, they're saying 22 model year, and the Hummer, they're saying 23 model year, which model yeah. years don't really mean anything anymore that, you know, the 22s are basically out, so. I'm definitely closer to Illinois than I am to Detroit. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. Like, uh, the Rivian plant's only six hours away, where Detroit, is, I know, is, like, a lot further. Yeah, maybe so, you'll see some uh, testing around. I. I don't think anybody tests here. <laughs> it's some we'll wide open spaces. Day. Yeah, they they they've been out in California a lot though the, because of desert yeah. and mountains and the tester tester number one was Emmy and she's been on the show. So, <laughs> so they Rivian had it in the in the Rebel Rally with Emmy Hall and Rebecca Donahue, and so we had them on the show before they went, and we haven't had them on since. We need to get them back on. Let's talk about that. Um, Did I, you guys see him on Long Way Round? Your long way, long way, long up. way up. Long way up. Yeah. I still haven't. 
I've been rewatching Ted Lasso. Subscription. I'm I'm on like my third time through <laughs> Ted Lasso. I'm uh, obsessed with that show. I love it. There are so many Kansas City references because Sudeikis grew up like 20 minutes from here. So like yeah, everything in it's his show. Like he's producing it and mm-hmm. writing it. So, um, and it's also like there are some horrible things that happen in that show, and it's all met with like lightheartedness. Of just it was the perfect pandemic watch because it, it was fant- fantastic yeah fantastic. it was it was it was great but every time i look at long way up um i start so i watch long way round and enjoy the crap out of that when i watch long way down sometime through the middle of that watching that series i started just to be like all right i get it yeah they didn't right. they have said that they didn't have as good of a time and it was it felt like work instead of just like the adventure yeah so and i think watching the second series is when i went okay i'm ready to have the my own adventure i'm, I'm getting tired of watching these two fairly well yep. guys have their adventures yeah well if you want to if you want to see the rivians in action jump to like episode three it takes a hot minute to get going anyway jump okay. to episode three and then just fast forward to the exciting parts mm-hmm. it's uh you know it's it's fun if you're if you're into the into the rivian stuff I yeah. I like Chris, the, one, I, the R1S a lot. I may need to borrow your Apple thing for that if you don't mind. Well, actually, I could probably just do a free trial and yeah, watch that and and the other show too. That so my my neighbor and I had the discussion last night that like you you might already have the subscription and just not realize it. Say I might have it because that's what he figured out last night. <laughs> His wife had it and he, she just hadn't told him. <laughs> yeah. Ugh. anyways moved so that's really all the news is hover yeah uh, yeah nothing else has happened there was there was news uh we we had a hiccup we we bought a, a old toyota because they don't break right it broke <laughs> again i maintain that the noise you heard was better than the noise you could have heard correct it was not a shattering of glass so one of my favorite features of our, our old Sequoia is that the back glass slides down. Like you can just crack it a little bit if you want to like suck some air out of the car. Like the Forerunners. Like, like Forerunners and Tundras. They do them too if you get a yep. fancy enough Tundra. Um, and so my wife had picked up some flowers and so she cracked the window to get a little air of the flowers, not too much. And she said when she went to put the window up, she heard a pop and she said the window was up. And then she looked back and the window was slowly sliding down <laughs> back into the... I was like, all right, so something's obviously broken. And that's when I remembered, hey, you know what? I, I thought when I closed it the other day, I heard something rattle in the lift gate. I wonder what that was about. Uh, turns out the window regulator, the arm that then actually moves the mechanism had rusted through. And that was the pop we heard was that arm snapping off completely. Uh, so it's supposed to rain here for like the next I think it's either five or seven days. Holy shit, really? Yeah, like it's supposed to start raining tomorrow God. and not stop raining until like next Friday. Or It's going to happen here. Oh, no. <laughs> It'll hit you like three days later. That's how it normally works. Um, I have no rain in the forecast for 10 days, so. Okay. So we have no rain in the forecast for like 10 months, so. Yeah, yeah. it's like it's the dry season. <laughs> what do you get? Two days of rain every Yeah, it rains eight, once in October. So. so that's like, okay, I think I mentioned this on the show last time. Or maybe not, but I was watching the opposite of, well, Jeff was on the show last time. Yeah. Okay. It was Jeff, but like I was watching um, the show, the rookie with Nathan Fillion, which takes place in LA. Like every other episode, it rains. Like this is, this is kind of horseshit. Like it never rains in LA. Like that's the whole point of LA. Probably because they were shooting it up in Vancouver. (laughs) Is that why? (laughs) I'm just, just a guess. It sounds, I'll I'll give it to you. Uh, Yeah, it was. It was actually really funny. Anyway, uh, so we got the truck. I took it in yesterday. Got it back today. It was not. It was not cheap. <laughs> Stupid window regulators. But like, and Ross and I had the the back and forth. We're like, well, I could do it myself. I probably could have taken that door panel apart and put the window regulator and put everything back on the guides and got it up. I've done that. It's a pain in the ass because you're either in the trunk yeah. pushing against it or it's over your head and you're right. like this. And it's just it, there's nothing fun about playing with stuff under the tailgate and because we're in the like we have started the baseball season we have three schedules it's just no i didn't have the time i took it to the dealer i made sure i and i wanted it done right i don't want weird things happening to the glass 
I didn't, I didn't want to break the glasses. I think my oh, that would be a much more expensive. Right. And that's a so, Jermaine Kid Hauler, right? Uh, it's, it's, it's Kid Hauler number two because we have a 17 Suburban as well. Oh, there you go. <laughs> like every, everything's okay, big. Okay, so you left. did have a backup in case you want to do it yourself. Right. Uh, yeah, but like we, we, we both are back in the office now, which is part of our really? issue. Really? Yeah. Um, I work at a smaller <laughs> company, so I think everybody in my building has been vaccinated. So it's good. We, yeah. And then Sarah's company is, they still have a lot of people out, but she's back in. Right. And their it, national it, headquarters is 10 minutes from me. <laughs> different company. Oh, really? <laughs> yeah. That's an old oh. company. <laughs> oh, I'm not connecting the dots then. And Ross, you have no updates. You just got nothing. Them. <laughs> yeah. I deleted everything. I got nothing. You don't want to talk about the possibilities? No. Okay, good. No speculation yet. <laughs> um, I spent probably an hour yesterday taking the quad apart even more. And we'll be dropping it off on Saturday at somebody's house to hopefully just confirm my suspicions. And then, yeah, I don't know. We'll Ross, Ross figured out the other day, Patrick, that his um, four-wheel drive quad wasn't actually a four-wheel drive quad. As it's like... The actual shafts was not doing anything. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. No, I, I was trying to diagnose the dying power steering and in the process realized that one of the axles had effectively um killed itself for lack of a better word (laughs) literally no literally and like and i was talking to my brother we were trying to pinpoint exactly when it was on the last ride and i got i got the quad stuck on a tree stop i tried to take like the hard line instead of the easy go around and there was a, a like tree stump with a you know part of the root coming out of it and it got the right, right front got lodged on the root and the quad did like a bounce, like one of those, like it catches and then it comes down hard, kind of bounces. And, you know, I was trying to do like the bump. So you come up to it slow and gas it as you get close and it just jumped and came right back down. It kind of seems like you're doing exactly what you should be doing if you're out there tooling around on a quad, right? I mean, <laughs> yes. you're not out there to, like, to take the easy way around the tree stump. No, never. Um, mechanical sympathy is not that's like the beauty of the quad is you don't have to have the same kind of mentality you have on something you have to drive home so there is no mechanical sympathy and uh and yeah luckily axles are like 100 bucks so you're paying for it yeah that that does remind me of a a story when i was in charlottesville with the my 04 tj we we got to one of those things and i took the old man line or the mm-hmm. wise man line, as I like to call it. Wise man line. Just because I, I, I knew I had to drive <laughs> it back to Kansas City from Virginia. So I took the side line and I watched a lady in a Rubicon do just what you described. Get up close, gas it, got the front end of the air and dropped the entire Jeep on the front drive shaft nice. of that Rubicon on a rock. Nice. And it kept going. At least Luckily. for the rest of that trail. I don't know if it lasted three more days, but for the rest of that trail, that thing was still, that was like an all-star Jeep. Like everybody's like, that's the one that she dropped on the drive shaft. Like it was amazing. <laughs> one day later, it was a two-wheel drive Jeep. I, so. uh, the best was the two kids on the back playing on their Nintendo DS who never looked up from their video games yeah, as mom there. was ramping it, the room. It wasn't, it wasn't their first rodeo. <laughs> mom why can't we have dinner tonight i gotta replace another drive shaft <laughs> exactly um oh man speaking of replacing drive shafts do, do we, <laughs> we can get into truck night in america <laughs> let's do it because <laughs> right. i'm sure somebody had to replace a drive shaft on that show there were lots yes <laughs> there were so two seasons two seasons filmed in north carolina filmed in georgia Georgia. I was good. Yeah, just Close. outside Augusta. Really? Yep. And crazy. contestants are from all over the place, right? Nationwide. They kind of nationwide. Okay. Nationwide. Nationwide. Yeah, it was actually filmed in the location was um, an old uh, Kalen mine that had been convert still operational and in, in some areas of it, but the old area had been confirmed to a uh, like a, a UTV ATV park that okay. when we took it over you know we grew everything and mm-hmm. it had it had since become a uh you know an, an off-road park 
and they were putting in, last I heard they were putting in full camper services and you know all sorts of uh support so that people would come wow. drive their rigs there huh dude the amount of diversity and rigs that you guys had on the show was amazing it was incredible i mean it was incredible the people the vehicles uh you know just the behind the scenes mechanical skill just to keep that Mm -hmm. show going was everything was just larger than life okay the hard-hitting question that i wanted to ask what's the most heroic fix that had to happen oh that's an easy one um so season two we had uh we built a two-stage waterfall out of shock creek so it kind of went it kind of there was this kind of creek um and then it went up and then it evened off and there was like Mm -hmm. a pool of water about a foot deep then went up again and um you know the coaches would prep their drivers but most of them hadn't really gone up anything that puts you right at that you know that rollover angle Mm -hmm. and this woman was going up and you know in maybe it was a tj um and on the second one she just she started to roll back and did exactly what they told her not to do it just hit the brakes and she hit the mm-hmm. brakes and the thing just rolled over nailed on the first the the first sort of even part and then kept going and slid down the second oh, oh on the man. roof or on the roll bars yeah, on, on the roof on the roof Jeez. and the whole thing as even though as i tell the story still plays out in slow motion i mean it was <laughs> terrifying as the showrunner we're watching from our little you know, video village up in the tent and you're just like, how far away were you? Is, how, she, is she alive? You know, was the um, tent like literally just at the top of this next waterfall? It or? Yeah, it was at the top off camera. So, you know, I came running out and then they got her up, but our safety crew was top notch. So everything, everything was fine. But the bigger thing was she actually didn't lose that round. So because she made it much further than the, the person behind her. <laughs> Got it. So it was about how far nice. she got, not about how far she rolled back. Yeah. Correct. Yeah. <laughs> so they, and the first guy broke like at the bottom. So he okay. may not even, even made it, you know, as far as she did. Um, oh. Cause there was a little off-road section. Um, so I'll tell you, we hauled that thing back to the shop and uh, Bender, one of the hosts and some of our, you know, behind the, the scenes people, I mean, it was, a heroic effort the, because not only the, the thing about truck net was like, not only did the thing need to just be able to go, which is kind of like the field fix, but for us, it needed to be safe. If the safety. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so the cage was the cage had, you know, done its job, but it, it had been compromised. So it was the factory cage, just like the normal. No, like, no, no. We wouldn't allow anybody in a, in oh, a really? factory cage. No. Okay. No, no, and it, um, and even an app. Wow. That must've been a flop and a half. No, they were all cages. Everybody came yeah. with a cage, even if you had a Wrangler, because the Wrangler cages are just bolted to the chassis. Um, so we, uh, I mean, he was, we get in there cutting open the cage and putting cross members in. And I mean, the thing was like, you would look at it, you're like, there's no way that thing's going anywhere. Is it a white sure TJ? A, sure enough. What's that? Was it a white I TJ? The color. I forget the color. I, I put in uh, truck night in America Jeep repairs and the same girl from Alabama keeps showing up. So yeah, I don't yeah, know. That's, that's, that's gotta be okay. it. <laughs> I mean, talk about character. She was incredible too. She was like, man, I had a mouth on her, but just <laughs> so entertaining. As you do. So uh, entertaining. I'll see if I can find a picture. Then. Um, yeah. So that was, I mean, there was, but there was, there was other fixes like that. They were like, I mean, people would show up to us with, rigs that were like barely 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 working they just had this one fix they needed to make mm-hmm. you know and we'd get going on the show and realize like the thing needed to be fixed like, like really it. fixed like <laughs> so you know the show must go on yep so we'd fix it so you guys designed the course from absolute scratch or was there like kind of an existing framework and you pieced it together um the course was uh it was a uh like I said, it was this Kalen mine that had these trails on it. Right. Um, right. And the green hell. So I designed the green hell around um, the, uh, what was there existing trails. And then some, some we cut new roads, some we widened areas. 
Um, and then we put in stuff that we knew we wanted, you <laughs> okay. know, so like the big climb at the end, like we built that out, mm -hmm. um, that bridge thing. We, you know, originally that was supposed to go over a big area, but you know, you, you make changes and sacrifices as you go along. So we fed, there were specific elements and we would find a place for those. And then sometimes it was, uh, um, parts of the course were as is and other things we used. So there was a series of uh, whoops. Um, those weren't there, but the road was there. Mm -hmm. so. I love everything. Yeah. Like there's so many different things. Like was that square body <laughs> to mm -hmm. a JK? Is that a Toyota? Of is that a first gen Forerunner? It looks yeah, like it was. Crawler. Yeah, to so all the way out to uh, somebody pre-runnered out of Silverado. Like, yeah, like an 800 Silverado. <laughs> it's fantastic. Yeah, and that one up front, that's a full-on mud drag truck. So it's like you got, oh, really? you got a little you got a little crawler guy, right? Mm -hmm. You know, and his crawl gear is going up against like a full drag, drag truck. That's crazy. drag truck. So in... Like an like, open exhaust, like 350 with... <laughs> you know those they were meant to haul ass for like 30 seconds like in the mud jesus i've seen those videos <laughs> <laughs> yeah those videos are great they're great fun to watch <laughs> especially when they blow up and it's somebody else's money fixing it like yeah <laughs> yeah uh, I mean, like, yeah they would show up with like drag boat you know drag motors burning race fuel blah, 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 blah. like a 55 gallon cams. barrel of like 100 acting 105 yeah i mean it was and then you know you'd be going up against some dude that's like there and a sort of stock diesel just like rolling some coal <laughs> so you're in california you have like a rental car or something did you ever look at it and go i wonder how far i can make it in this uh <laughs> in the, whatever it is i picked up at the airport yeah, I mean, what did I have? I had a uh, a Denali. I had really? Okay. Denali. Yeah, and I would, I, you know, that thing got, you know, driven like a rental. I'd take it around the course. Rental. Did you? Yeah, and nice. then we had off camera, we had, uh, you know, the repair crew had a, uh, what was it? A full caged custom thing that they drove. But then we also had like a, a test vehicle that we use sometimes that you could, if you wanted to, you know, if you wanted to drive around, it was one of those kits that was basically a cage on a, uh, a Toyota body. Mm -hmm. um, you know, there's somebody down there in the, the Southeast that that was like your control to see if, if something was like doable or if yeah. it was like totally just like not even feasible. Yeah. And then, well, that was the, the, that was the deal for season one. And then season two, we actually had some of our favorites, production favorites, come back and they the local guys that would help us test you know mm -hmm. they, and they just wanted to come down and be part of the um you know part of the family so they would bring bring the rigs down and sometimes there were like rigs that weren't on the show and they would just come test stuff you know and we'd be out there you know until the sun set shining up the hillside with headlights just testing these things just to make just, sure they were yeah that was it that was it yeah that that does look like an FJ40 hood. Like it looks like a classic Land Cruiser. Yeah, it's hood. like a 52s on an LS. <laughs> LS. Um, oh. Full four wheel steering. That thing was mm -hmm. incredible. Dude, that just 52s are huge. That's yeah, and that thing a would. Lot. Uh, that would. That's what we used to. It was branded because we would use that to haul away vehicles. Like if they couldn't make it through the challenge. Oh no! <laughs> What's the powertrain in that thing? ls7 i think it's oh. an ls6 is the hashtag LS6. you have on the photo yeah okay there we go oh boy okay i'm doing my research here ross i got you <laughs> that sounds fun <laughs> yeah there was no shortage i mean it, you know we would swap shows and the vehicles would show up um a couple of days ahead of time so there was always every day there was new cars showing up so you show up at set and you're like oh, what, what are we going to see today and you go over to the parking lot and we would just have these people would send their rigs ahead of time. And then there would just be, they'd just be lined up. Yeah. That's crazy. Okay. So that, that, that image is challenge one, episode one, season one. So <laughs> these, so we're all lined up and watching. And this woman just absolutely 
launches and we would tell them do not like if you if you if you try to hammer down on this thing you will launch into the air so just be safe and smart and she just you know right down on the gas and just did let up and then she hit this thing and was all of a sudden like 20 feet in the air did it break yeah. for the audio yeah. listeners the in every little way. the little clip here is worth looking at um I don't know what the timestamp is, but it's uh, it looks like a scout going fully airborne. It is at a <laughs> high trajectory, not like a little a nice bit air. Trip. Like that's that's yeah, that it's like Houston. We have liftoff status. So there's a there's a challenge called bumps and jumps where they were we would take five trucks, five wide, and they would race down a series of. Um, different um bumps and jumps and there was a water hazard and some of these jumps if you wanted to go fast you would have to lift and stay on the ground going into the jump otherwise um you would launch into the air so most competitors um would keep it slow and you know because they wanted to win the race and other people were just there to you know pull my beer and watch this five seconds of glory truck and then you would see the, the, the camera on their face when we got back to post-production of them going through that realization. Like, and oh, all no. Of a sudden, oh, I fucked up. Hair, like, <laughs> like, you know, a 6,000 pound like thing. And, you you know, it's what's funny Bobby. about this one is if you're watching the video, the dude in the back in the, the silver pickup, Bertha, he won. He's no right Ram? behind. Yeah, he like a 12, so uh, 12 valve Cummins Ram. Not only did he win the challenge, but he won the episode. And then he came back to be one of our testers. Really? Yeah, he's the smartest driver there. How broken was the scout? Like frame um, or like suspension? You know, at the end of the day, I'm not exactly sure what. I, I, I'm pretty sure the frame was bent. It was the whole thing when you look at the pictures afterwards kind of looked like that. Oh. A little bit. Of suspension was shot. I mean, Awkward. I kept a piece of it um, <laughs> on my desk for the next two seasons just to remember um, the state of mind of uh, people who are not used to competing um, in, in, in what mm -hmm. and, you know, when they so when they showed up to just keep, you know, safety in mind and to understand that these, you know, you would, these people would spend all this money building their rigs and they come on the show and, um, they didn't they weren't down to like break them you know but yeah. they would just get in to the emotion of um the competition and they just would all care would just go out the window um so we would have to make sure that our our, mm. our safety structure um was uh robust enough to make sure that even in those scenarios people were um still safe right there's a, a fine balance between entertainment and actually jeopardizing people's lives when because you're kind of hands off you know like you can tell them what to do and what not to do but ultimately it's their foot on the gas pedal absolutely yeah absolutely we would have areas where we couldn't we didn't want to get let them achieve speed really you know mm -hmm. so we didn't have you know certain straightaways we would calc out like how fast we they could potentially be going at any one point and, um you know and then off people often would crash in areas where we just there was just like no way we never even anticipated mm -hmm. it you know yep so to pivot a little bit so top gear mm -hmm. the involvement with them on the adventures and i mean they're technically i guess not challenges but like things that they're up against how much different is it trying to coach people into doing what they're supposed to do in terms of you know like three people who have knowledge and like not necessarily just a script but also a purpose in an episode versus people who show up and and do like you said the hold my beer and watch this yeah, so I mean, the, those two, those two shows, and the the, the thought process between um, them, it couldn't be more different. So basically, on Top Gear, <laughs> we had three total professionals. You know, they were mm -hmm. they had done the show many seasons. Um, they they were really good at um, the show. Yeah, they had perfected so, the science by then. 
yeah so there was no there was no question as to um you know what they what they were there to do um and a lot of the uh, uh, uh a lot of the job was to create the sandbox and but then let them do their thing and you could just right. step back and it was a real pleasure to watch because they they you know they were fantastic but you also had um when they're behind the wheel three people with you know three different skill sets so <laughs> also fair is that the you nice know, way to would, put you'd it you have to uh, <laughs> yeah you'd have to create that environment a little bit i remember watching that episode and going huh i say this going I watched this episode way. and literally thought to myself, I don't really need to go do the Rubicon Trail. I thought to myself, I have to go do the Rubicon Trail. <laughs> We're very different people. We have very different <laughs> off-roading preferences. <laughs> In case we like haven't made that clear. I don't like rocks. I love rocks. So that rig still lives. I think we gave it to, we had a, um, there's a woman, Nina, who, uh, who runs a school. Nina Barlow? Stuff. Yes. So still, she still has that. I think. Last still trying to lock her into the show. Rig. Oh, that's so funny. <laughs> was she on the show? No, I'm no, trying not to get yet. <laughs> you, you're our second person with Top Gear experience in your past to name drop Nina, and I every time will go Barlow. <laughs> yeah. So I believe that rig still lives. She was using it as a, uh, a training vehicle. I. That's yeah. I heard. That's awesome. I mean, built XJ. Why not? It's a forerunner, isn't it? It's yeah. a forerunner? Yeah. Jesus Christ. I'm cheating because I'm using search results, but I'll show you in a second. It's a forerunner. I'm zoomed in way too much. <laughs> it was at like 300% when I opened it. So. That yellow in my mind is XJ or Xterra. Oh, yeah. Holy shit. It's got some fender flares that I wasn't expecting. Little XO cage on yellow. I'm, I'm- I wonder if the number Beautiful. of XO caged second gen forerunners can be counted on more than just two hands. Probably. Maybe. Maybe. So, so it was had a... you done? Go you ahead, Chris. No, no, you keep going. No, I was going to say, Patrick, had you done the Rubicon Trail before that? Oh, no. No, I had. Oh, not. yeah. I had so, ha- so, okay. So, follow up question How does production work? on an episode like that are you in something that's just crazy built that can just like follow them or like lead them as you go or yeah so production on every episode you would have to um you you really tailor it to to the needs of any specific show um yeah so that show there was a uh yeah series of effectively rubicons that would just it was like a train you know the guys did their thing and it's not like a bunch of friends going out to be like, let's do the Rubicon. Mm-hmm. This, you know, it was very much all planned out. Okay. Because you know, we have a production window we have to hit. We need to know where we're staying. We need to allow for a lot of time because just assume that whatever, however long you think it's going to take to double it for television. How many people um, are on a shoot like that? Not, 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 they're not, not very big. Maybe, man, I don't know, 50. You say 50? I mean, 50 people moving along. <laughs> I mean, including everybody. A hard driving. trail is. Yeah, yeah, that's a lot. What about truck night? Is that a, a bigger crew just because of the, yeah, so the truck night, real estate that had to be covered? Out, uh, about season two, 130 ish. Holy shit. <laughs> yeah, that's a and big there's number. A big, it's big, but it's not. I mean, when you compare it to big television shows, some have hundreds, you know, and this was. Yeah. Um, right. Right. You know, and this was roughly 130. And, you know, we had people that were working on the show that were locals. Were they on the crew? I mean, they were part of the family. But People are just showing up. And, yeah. What about um, just out of sheer curiosity, when you were doing like Survivor and, and that kind of stuff, was that even further on grand scale in terms of people? Yeah, so or Survivor was, that... was massive. I remember asking on one of the Survivors, um, three, four, something like that. And it was like, including the locals, it was like 400 people. <laughs> Jesus. I mean, the American or the, the nor the television, the travel crew was not nearly that big. That was a hundred and something mm-hmm. probably. Right. Um, you know, but once you have all the local day laborers and yeah. right. you know, right. you're in areas of the world where labor's 
not as expensive as it is here you know sometimes you could just have a ton of people to, yeah. to help get stuff done so so i mean 50 people moving across the rubicon in one basically one group is still a lot of people yeah how many how many vehicles slow. was it like st- i mean other than the three like hero vehicles Doesn't it? Just a, a train of, of Wranglers and then the hero, <laughs> yeah. right? Like, I could probably get an answer for you. I have somebody. <laughs> I'm not. We are not. I'm just concerned. curious because, like, I've been I've been in off road packs where it's two people, and I've been in off road packs where there's twenty trucks. I mean, it's horrible. <laughs> it was a thing. It was a thing. Yeah. Did you have? It was, it was a full spectacle. Were there professional drivers that took the crew through the trail or was it entirely just people having to figure it out? Do you mean the, the cast? Uh, yeah. yeah I mean, well, no, 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 not, not, we, not necessarily the cast. Like anything that's off camera, there's no, there's no chance. We want to be as efficient. So they were, they <laughs> okay. were Rubicon people. They okay. On, on uh-huh. Rubicon. Yeah. What, it's not, it wasn't just like a bunch of camera people showing up who would like rental cars. <laughs> you like, never hey, know. Guys, let's go. Uh, you hey, show up. Television. I was in show Colorado. Up. Chris, go ahead. <laughs> I was going to say, he showed up at the Denali and was like, let's do it. <laughs> Fuck it, we're here to party. Okay, right? <laughs> yeah. No, I was in, I was in Colorado a month ago with my wife and my my best friend. We went up into the mountains and his lifted Tacoma. And there's like a rental company you can rent a, a, a like current Rubicon on thirty sevens and just they hand you a map and say go. Yep. And we passed this other group coming the other way, and the girl was like. I mean, like you, I can't smell still from COVID, but I can smell the weed. And she was like, Uh, I got no idea what I'm doing. I was like, uh, there's a 4,000 foot cliff, (laughs) you know, to your side here. We're at 9,000 feet. Like, so you never know. Um, Just wait until those rental companies are starting to hand out 392 Wranglers. Oh God, I'd want nothing to do with that. I want to be (laughs) so far away. Like, no. Um, Jesus Christ. Oh God, that's stuff. That's just, that's recipe for disaster. Um, so, have you uh, have you driven anything interesting lately? What's in? I mean, what's in your like personal garage? Have I driven anything interesting lately? I am. Um, I'm in the market for a well loved uh, uh, 996 C4S. Yes. So I've been driving some of those. Nice. Okay. I cannot have. I cannot, for the life of me, find one that will pass the PPI, though. Yeah. So. They, that, that sounds very nine nine six ish. Nine nine six was bottom of the market, and then suddenly everybody got over the headlights and went, "Oh, they're all so good." Like a couple years ago, like just recently. This yeah. Time. Like so probably with watching. since pandemic, when everything else, like nine nine sevens and nine nine threes, fucking well, it, hit the sky. You, you have to realize, like. The 996 is like we're we're now at the age of like that's kids in high school and college are now getting old enough to be able to go yeah. back. So when they were super cheap, even though they weren't super cheap because you were probably mm-hmm. going to invest the same amount of money into it that you bought it for, people grabbed them. And now they're like, all right, I put this money into it and they're holding them. Yeah. Okay, so you're looking for a C, you said C4S? So that's, uh, that's the most interesting stuff that I've been driving. Lately. Okay. <laughs> um, I mean, that's a good place to be. Yeah. So we'll see. We'll see how that works out. Um, I haven't seen. Uh, I haven't seen the XJ recently, other than in picture. So I'm do a visit. Do a visit there. <laughs> and, Tell everybody um, in. What's the story with the XJ? The XJ. So <laughs> I had it since it was new. Ninety-seven, two door. 4.0, five speed. Um, Just basically the holy grail of XJ configurations. It's fantastic. Um, it's got 180 ish miles on it. Um, it's been across the country several times. It's it's something that I owned when I was younger, so it's had the snoppy out of it. Um, and you know, had a lot. I had some deferred maintenance, and then truck night came along in my life, 
And I, and what's funny about the X Ray is I did, it was so beat to hell and I still drove it, daily it in LA that when we were casting the show, we went to the top of a parking garage and I just like left it, left it out there. And I would have the different cast members that we would shoot them and they would have to review it. <laughs> That's the, that was how it was. Ca- oh my God. That was auditions. It was terrifying. <laughs> and also like, you know, it's like, you don't, until somebody's really going at your rig, it's like, oh, man, yeah, you're right. I really, and then <laughs> with all this knowledge, with all this knowledge that I gained on Truffnet's side, it was, it was time. So it's been, it's been in the shop for life. Well, it got pandemic. So it went in. It's a new word. It, it went, went in in the fall of 19. And then um, it's just in there. It so, hasn't come yeah. out yet. That's oh, a terrible time no, to drop something off for work. It's only in body right now, right? So and then it's going to uh, then we I got to send it to have all the suspension done, but it's moving. It's moving forward. So I'm sweet, that's good. Excited. What are the plans? So I'm going up about three, three and a half, putting a long arm. Uh, I think a TNT long arm kit in the front, going to keep the leaves in the back. Um, <laughs> cutting, uh, putting in notch customs, fender flares front and front and rear um uh, i replaced the interior full interior replacement um bought a uh a new interior out of a a wrecked xj (laughs) because it had been destroyed by the Mm -hmm. california sun things basically a greenhouse time age yeah uh, xj plastics just corroding into the earth yeah redid the headliner um so putting a four-point cage in the back you know something that's nice livable um, is the long arm kit is that fit 33s or are you on like 35s no uh, 32 32 okay. and a half it'll yeah. fit up to 33 when you cut lock to lock when you cut the and you're compressed when you cut the, the fenders mm-hmm. um so you know the not the 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 notch custom and man they've been great to work with and the, the body shop guys said the best fender flares i've ever seen um you know so once they're all cut out there's full full movement for those okay um, you know, when you're blocked and articulated and all that. Um, so yeah, it's going to look good. Um, and then I'm like, I'm just leaving the engine. <laughs> I'm not yeah. A four well, liter. I'm leaving it, la- it to last at least. It'd be nice to, cause those things can make a whole lot more power. I was thinking about taking it up to 300. Um, you could do a four, six, you could do like a boring stroke four, six. And then, I mean, off I, the I looked deep up- end pictures of fender flares those are the notch custom fender flares so yeah yeah for sure yeah it's a lot of flare it looks good it, i think it looks what's they're happening the same shape as stock so yeah yeah that's it's just exaggerated yeah and so it's just a healthier version of stock is how i'm that's what i'm telling myself like, <laughs> the um, wheels in that <laughs> picture are fucking terrible i can't take it oh but my it's god it's also a periwinkle xj like <laughs> it's not Wow, strong color game. Yeah, right. I would have said light or sky blue. <laughs> it's not sky blue. <laughs> you got the color. Crayola thing. I think that might be a, a notch Very custom nickel. vehicle. I also have genetic color blindness in my family, so you never know. Anyways. <laughs> that one was blue, Ross. Ah, oh, thanks. Um <laughs> <laughs> No desire to do a, like a, a 996 like Safari build? Oh, God, there's every desire to do a 996 <laughs> Safari build. Kids me? Yeah. But uh, I think that would be... You got to keep it one project at a time. So. Yeah. yeah, fair. That dude with the rooftop tent on the 996 has made the rounds on every single piece of media. It's fantastic. Like, oh, God. I've seen it enough. We can uh, see it more. You know, you might be able to get a 996 one did they do a 996.14 and not 4S? And then you get because it's really the 9962 that are going for the money. I'm not sure. That's the guy. Um, <laughs> I don't know. I just know that every time I get like the bring a trailer cars and bids daily email, there's 996 turbo or GT3 on there that's suddenly 70 or $110,000. Yeah, I did see, just see a. Uh... Man, a turbo low miles it went for like 70 that's insane that's crazy that's such a big number for those cars there's a carrera four on cars and bids right now and the bids only 12 grand how it's many days are left five there you go <laughs> yeah. 
But I'll tell you those the nine nine seven ones are they're they're in the thirties now, man. You know, yeah, that's Paul crazy. Carrera. Yeah. Is this is gonna be your first your first Porsche? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Everybody, dude. You know, everybody's going there. I'm fifty fifty now. Just it's getting a little frustrating. So you know, so we'll see. I was also I was also considering an Avora. Um but the um the uh the first couple of years before the Avora S, because everybody's like, ah, the Avora S is the one you gotta get, Avora S, you yeah, know, supercharged uh, transmission Whee! cable, dude, yep. it's underpowered, it can handle more power. I'm like, okay. But the thing is it's still a killer to drive, even if it doesn't have the the Avora S power. Mm-hmm. And you can do a you can do a kit and just get the Avora S um uh, transmission cables. Right. What, what year would be an Avora? The Avora, I think it's like 2010? 10. Yeah, 11. I think I was just looking at one that was like 11. Okay. And you, those supercharger kits are pretty accessible. Yeah, I mean, I don't, I probably just wouldn't bother with any of that. You know, I was wondering, I was thinking about asking a friend, like, so what would it be like to throw a, a supercharger kit? on this because he supercharged his mustang mm-hmm. you know on his own as you do but yeah i mean you know so like there you for the price of a uh you know like a really well appointed 996 c4s you can get one of those 2010 it, 2011 avora yeah 10 year newer <laughs> avora with a camry engine you know oh blah. <laughs> not even you know naturally aspirated camry engine you've heard those things at like seven thousand rpm they sound fantastic it'd be fun. yeah it'd be great you don't see many of them around they're simple i couldn't tell you the last time i saw an avora if yeah, ever you just on the street you here you i see them every now and then but you know i'm in los angeles so you're the- you're probably in the place where they saw the most avoras in the states is the Man, I still don't really see that often. Is the Elise the one that uses the same engine as the Toyota Matrix? Yes. Okay, that's the I believe. One, right? So yeah. yeah, the the like stupid high revving one. Yeah. Yeah. The Exige is the uh... the Exige is the one you buy if you yeah, hate track, yourself. Track, track <laughs> that's the track prep one, right? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, but I, I I've known people that have daily leases and they love them. Yeah. yeah. Todd from Everyday Driver dailies an Elise in the summer. Is that, car? Doesn't Camisa and he's have like, an Elise? Camisa has an Elise. But like I think Camisa is a normal height. Todd's like six four. Like Todd's I don't like, know how he that fits in it fine. Yeah. He said getting in and out is contortionism. Yeah. But I don't know. I, I don't have those problems. I'm short, so. Yeah, I heard that about the Avora too. Um, it's just nice to have those vestigial rear seats in, in case of emergency. Yes. I mean, 996 is the same thing. Like you're not really sitting back there unless you're under the age of four. <laughs> well, that, or or you're sitting sideways like you, you on just, his desperation run home from like a bar. <laughs> Ross know? doesn't realize he just discounted all of Patrick's children. <laughs> yeah. Like, <laughs> yeah, I mean, maybe no that's his... There. Maybe that's his intention. That's true. You'll get in the back seat and you will like it. Right. But dad, my hip hurts. <laughs> <laughs> Too bad getting the frunk. <laughs> when I was your age, we were in the back of the wagon without seats. Right. <laughs> or airbags. Oh, God. Uh, or, for that matter, disc brakes. Like, <laughs> like, yeah, right. <laughs> oh, that was something I was talking about the other day with somebody. It was the, uh, the, well, the 80 series Land Cruiser I had. There are no airbags in that thing. They're like, yeah, but it was it was really safe, right? I was like, not anymore. Like, comparatively, no. Back then, it was probably the safest thing you could buy. Yeah, yeah. I was looking at nine forty four is two, and my cutoff for the nine forty four was eighty seven, and later because of the airbag. I drove an eighty five last week. Yeah, early last week, and it was the first time, first first Porsche, first Porsche I've driven. And what um, was your experience? There were some things that were very strange, but overall, I was like, I got in the car convincing myself I wasn't going to like it. And by the time I 
was done driving it, I was like doing the dog with his tail between his legs. I'm like, fuck, now I have to tell everybody that I like this thing and get it. It was good. It was like I had great little cars. Yeah. Sim- it, similar the, to the Miata. Oh, totally dissimilar. Really? Okay. Like the controls had a lot of weight. Uh, there was like heft to everything. Um, the build quality was amazing. You know, it, it felt the Miata on the inside feels 10 years older than it is. And this felt 10 years newer than it was. <laughs> yeah. It was an 85 and in non airbag car, obviously, but like the ergonomics and the greenhouse and the visibility and everything, like it really felt like it was like a 95. Um, it was great. Oh God. If I had disposable income, it would be in my driveway. <laughs> And by my driveway, I mean the parking lot and the apartment that I live in. <laughs> Sweet. So yeah, they're well, well balanced little cars. Yeah. But you know, that said, we'll see. We'll see where all the we'll see where all the projects lead. It'll lead somewhere. Yeah, I also have a 325 XI that I drive um, back in New York, which I'll tell you, I also got about 180. Had it since oh. Four, um, yeah. So wow, that's a stretch. Four. I bought it, bought it used, but had it since four. It's been great, it's been great. Really? You know, every you should... now and then there's their fifteen hundred dollar repair, yeah. but they're not that frequent, you know. But I decided one hundred eighty thousand miles. You know, it, it does tend to drink a bit of oil these days. That uh, we're just gonna retire to like limited use in northern New York State. <laughs> but it makes me smile every time I get in it. Where in New York? Uh, very north very north in new york and this uh, near the st lawrence river oh yeah okay actually very north <laughs> yeah. yeah i'm not, gonna, not talking about westchester here <laughs> i grew up in westchester but, and, and so many people are like yo i'm northern new york upstate new york and it's like fucking all really far up there I mean, that I yeah st lawrence is back. yeah that is uh that yeah that's canada you're that's up there yeah so it gets stored in a barn during the winter and then uh, you know <sighs> sweet got to be so cold up there over the winter. Oh, yeah. It's like negative, negative. Oh, horrible. Although, tell me if this is a bad idea or a good idea. I was just thinking, I've always loved the E60 M5, and I know that it's a bag of hurt. Bad idea. In every way. <laughs> but, man, I was like looking at one. I'm like, is it going to go for more than 25? Oh, God. It looks really well sorted. It was on cars. It was the one on cars and bids. <laughs> Add $10,000 to whatever you plan on spending oh, on an E60 it, M5 and you're fine. Like if, if you buy a car for 20, but no, you have to spend 30, then like you're in the right headspace. But if you buy a car for 20 and go into $20,000 M5. You're Dude, one, one just closed fucked. three days ago for 22.5. SMG oh, or stick? Because uh, the stick shift. Automatic. Yeah, the stick shift cars are starting to go for like money. There's I, one on there, right? I was looking at them years ago before I knew they were a, a nightmare and they're mid 50s. Dude, there's but a black feel, one on there right now, the manual. That's the one I was talking about, that one. Yeah. <laughs> What's it at? 20 with five days to go. Oh, Jesus. So that's, that's a 40 or 50. <laughs> yeah. Crazy. There's a lot yeah, of M5s that have been on here. Now. He's going to, you know, the Vanus and those things will chew your face off. Yeah, E60 M5996. Pick your poison. Which engine do you want to have <laughs> <laughs> inevitable or Paris? <laughs> I think I'd pick the V10. I'd, I'd go 996, and then you can just drop in more engine. I, I, this is completely personal. I like the V10 M5s. I thought they like, mm-hmm. but that's like one of my first like experiences with Top Gear UK was them testing a V10 M5. That and the, I think it was the other one was the 996 911 that they were. Nice. And like that was one of the, some of the first episodes I ever saw was, was them doing that. But that V10 sounds great. Oh, it, it, it does sound incredible. So your, your wife had a bunch of pictures that look like you guys and the kids outdoors. What's up, Creeper? 
<laughs> yeah, exactly. Hey, I had to do some research. When you're going to talk to somebody for over an hour you've never met before, you're like, all right, I got to find something to talk about. No, it looked oh, like you California, guys get out quite a we bit. Of, we do a lot of camping. We did a, uh, we, uh, our full COVID trip last year, we did a, uh, you know, it was a fire sale on rentals. So I got a, a Suburban. We took that thing across the country, um, hitting parks as they were like sort of opening up in, in June. Mm-hmm um we were the only one at the grand canyon like at sunset one night because they would shut the park oh, at uh at uh uh two during the day and nope no nope. if you were there you could stay but right no one else came in come in um so we took that in a tent and we slept in the tent and the kids just you know we laid out the back and they stayed in that thing and we just you know checked out parks and drove across country you know during this whole craziness last summer and then what the year before that we uh, we uh she took the kids through uh when you have a kid in fourth grade you can get into all the national parks for free yep. so nice did a road trip through utah i picked them up in up in jackson flew up there did like yellowstone grand teton jackson's supposed to be great too did oh, did you guys see the clip from yellowstone today so American tourists being dumb as possible. Uh, freaking grizzly bluff charged a lady and got within probably like 10 to 15 feet of her before she finally went, Oh, I should walk away from here. And then like somebody else is filming it as she like turns and walks away with her phone. And you're like, what kind of moron? And there's That's three grizzlies that. within 25 yards of her. And they're out taking pictures, right? Yeah. She's just like, standing Instagram. outside her vehicle i will I, i'm literally trying to find it real fast because it was oh, on twitter all day for me all right i got you the other lady in the car like the lady filming it like her reaction is like oh my god oh my god but like this this bear is not messing around the thing's fucking enormous and that look at the lady just said like there's nothing between her and that bear. Like oh there's my. a ditch and a tiny rock wall. Like that bear will end you now. Like oh just people being like oh sorry. Giant pet peeve of mine. Yeah, you know, it's uh, always a bit sad to see somebody not not respecting the mites of nature, you know. You kind of wanted the bear, you know, not to do anything too bad, but just kind of come up, maybe just give her like one little slap. I just like a punch in the face. Just, yeah. yeah, just, uh, you know, you not a full fist, just a, you know, open-handed slap, you know. Just open like, paw. Yeah. Teach everybody. Paw? Bear some. You know. Yeah, they have bear paws. Paws, yeah, paws. Yeah, an open <laughs> paw. Or maybe an open paw backhand. Yeah, <laughs> yeah I can't. I oh. just, there's, I think when I was at North Rim, they had like, they, it was still during like October. So it was like social distancing stuff, but like they had the distance you needed to be from everything. And it was like, it like, there was nothing there. Like they were way too close. Like you need to be a hundred yards away from bears because they're fast. They're fast. People are like in that video are really slow. And bison get people all the time because nobody expects them to corner on their front hooves. They rotate on their front hooves so they can corner on that dime. And then people get bored. Civic type R of the uh, animal kingdom. Yeah, uh, it's exactly what they are. <laughs> bison are great at moving around, uh, except for the ones at the North Rim because they're not real bison, but we've already talked about that. On we've, show. We've, yeah, we've established this. They're beefalo. <laughs> I just like saying it again. They're like cow bison oh hybrids. Oh my God. And, they, and the locals hate them because they're terrible in the dry climate. They're too much cow, not enough bison. Beefalo. Beefalo. That's like Beefalo. a t-shirt that you get at, you know, the thrift shop. A barbecue like, place in Kansas City, probably. Yeah, pretty much. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, 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 yeah. You're not wrong. Uh, I'll I was have just one. driving around a uh a 240, full drift, drift prep 240, trying to trying to learn how to how to drift well. I like that idea a lot, actually. It See, was so much fun. I, I want to do that, but I want to do it at like a rally school. I want to do that on the dirt. 
Yeah, I mean, there, there was a there was a, a woman there that was um, had a, a uh, it looked like a rally car, but it was a dirt a dirt prep drift car because she said it was just the less expensive way to kind of work on the skills. It is. She goes slip happens. Tires. Yeah, slip happens at a lot lower level on dirt. Yeah, I was wondering though, like, you know, what it what it would be like because you're never because you never you never really you never really have traction, you know what I mean? Cause it's the whole game is trying to, trying to be right there to keep the car mm-hmm. from gripping up, you know, and that's affected by heat and, and every, yeah, everything, you know? So it's like, is, does it just make it too easy? You know, when you're in the dirt, I don't know. That's, I, isn't that what um, Matt Farah, when he got a Safari 911, he drove Lee Keen's Safari 911 on the dirt. And he was like, it was the easiest thing to slide ever for, for, uh, sustaining slides around corners and that literally is what made him place an order for his so yeah maybe it is too easy maybe (laughs) i want to find out though maybe when xj's back we'll we'll give it a shot (laughs) (laughs) i like this what are you guys most looking forward to um we just bought the suburban so it's just traveling now getting getting back to to going places um we we have Montana on the schedule for later in the summer, so two full days in the car with four kids. Could be great. <laughs> it is. It'll, it'll be it'll be a good story when they get older. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, I don't know. We're we're supposed to borrow something um, from a certain manufacturer and drive it down to New Jersey, like Long Beach Island. So very much looking forward to that. Yeah, news to come hopefully figured tomorrow. you'd get something and go all the way to kevin and where's kevin tennessee is that where the utv driver you guys that are? is still in the works so kevin and i have been talking about him coming up to pennsylvania because we have like a couple big off-road parks in pennsylvania that he hasn't been to yet that they haven't been to and utv driver hasn't been to and a couple of the manufacturers actually do like test events there um so that may happen and then i don't know i i haven't decided if i want to take my quad when i go down to visit kevin and bowman or if i want to just fly you know borrow something uh, yeah borrow something so that's hopefully by the fall that'll happen sweet yeah i'm still supposed to borrow a john deere one of the gator you know big six 50 or something side by side so we'll see that'll be fun nice so i have a, I have a question what do you guys think that uh as four-wheel dudes that uh the whole electrification in the next five years is going to do to the the uh the four-wheel sort of truck night builder community um because i have i have thoughts on it some people worry about its demise so the potential and the reality are two different things. The potential is amazing. The reality is the off-road community is largely slow to change. And am I wrong, Chris? No, I, 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 think, I think it's going to take time to see the actual community embrace them. I think we'll see individuals embrace some, yeah, some EVs that are more off-roady, but like there will be small pockets or big names who do it in small capacities and run with it. I think the software leaps are going to have to be made first for the like for you. You're talking about like smaller guys building their own rigs. Like, I think there's going to have to be a software element to part of those builds now mm-hmm. to to really unlock what they want to unlock. Right. It's like dropping a different engine into, you know, a full-size Bronco was one endeavor, but largely that was a physical task. You know, there wasn't any computer or electrical aspect to it other than just wiring it up and making everything happy. Um, Maybe you have to get an aftermarket ECU, but that those were available. Yeah, exactly. With EV uh, powertrains, like... So I, I took a deep dive got it, oh, yeah, I throughout the winter that. because we, we have seen there's a company out of the UK called the uh, Classic Electric Classic Cars or Classic Cars. Yeah, Electric Classic Cars. 
and they've done some electric defenders and they've done some other uh, classics with electric powertrains. And I loved the idea of you're taking the most unreliable part out of those classics and putting in something that seems to be theoretically theoretically bullish functional yeah yeah and it was awesome watching the defender just drive up the hill because the only thing you heard was like the noise of the tires yeah. driving through this like little brook that they were driving up like i remember that awesome video. yeah yeah but the thing is in the instance of something like truck night i mean if somebody threw like a 75 or 100 kilowatt hour tesla battery in something that was otherwise gas powered, it'll have the ability to do things that a gas engine vehicle may not. And especially if you couple it with, you know, individual motors at all four corners. But if they burn off, you know, all of the range super quick, like then what's the, you know, the fallout from that? How many... Patrick, how many miles do you think they drove for truck night during filming an episode? How many miles did they drive in, in including getting around the course? The, the set was about four square miles. Okay. Um, if they won, so the green, I mean, I forgot, the green hell is about three miles, I think. Um, you know, if they won, they wouldn't drive that far. Yeah, like five miles. Yeah. Okay, so the <laughs> so the range aspect probably isn't a problem, right? You know, right? Um, but under heavy acceleration, I mean, you know, I'm assuming an EV would be would be burning off um, quite a lot. And we had some of the drag trucks we needed to refuel, like after every challenge. Really, right. because of the yeah. fuel capacity, or because they just like they said, okay, I'm gonna go, I'm gonna go two miles. I'm gonna put two miles worth of fuel in. For like yeah, I think some of them just had tiny tanks because they were literally built to just do the, the, the 30 drag. second blast. Yeah. Gotcha. Yeah. They they weren't, you know, they weren't like some of the get some of these like giant capacity overlander type of rigs. You know, they were I just, would love they, to see one go through the challenges that you that you guys had because I think a lot of a lot of your challenges were suspension based. So like as long as you still have a good suspension and the EVs have instant torque. Like, I think it'd be really interesting to see how an EV would handle all of that. I, I was all about trying to get one for season three. Right. I really <laughs> want to see I think it's very exciting, the whole EV all yeah. thing. I think I think people take a while to adapt, but like, I mean, combustion engines are complicated as hell. I mean, we're really good at it now. You know what I mean? So it's like, yeah, you know, it's kind of figured like it, like it, you know, like, but you still have eight are. things exploding fuel in front of you the entire time like uh, tied to tons of you know, linkages like powered by like yeah. electricity so it's like you know and like you take this dead simple almost unbreakable torquey power plant you know and you you mm -hmm. put it into this off-road world it just right. it seems very exciting you know that, and then you, yeah. you, you you know you just need some of that brain power to pivot from um you know the mechanical well, complexity of the engine to like making the software work and did you did you go to king of the hammers this year i know i wasn't there this year okay so this year that somebody ran a, an ev at king of the hammers oh wow um it, and it was interesting looking it was very similar to that uh truck that was in the truck night image that i was like mm -hmm. hey that's a forerunner right it was it was yeah. forerunner based and so it was just a home built ev so it's starting. <laughs> it's like, I think wow. my point here is saying like some yeah. of those home build guys are starting to do the math and figuring out, all right, what's it take? Mm -hmm. um, the only problem that I foresee now that we've, you know, discussed the range problem is if you have a truck like this with a normal gas engine, something goes wrong. Somebody in the pits is going to be able to figure out what's wrong. You know, if you have an EV drivetrain, you're talking about crazy diagnostic tools and then somebody who's actually in tune with that specific, you know, battery system and motor system, whatever it came out of, to be able to just figure out what's wrong at a base level. 
So I don't know. I'm, I'm very excited to see it proliferate through everything. Um, I just, I think there's, you know, there's some hurdles like that, like, like diagnosing an issue in the pits between heats, you know, that are, that are, we're going to have to yeah. figure out as a, as a hobby. Have you guys dipped into <clears throat> extreme E at all? I follow them on Instagram. I've Not seen, so, I've seen some of the major wrecks that they look like they were having. Oh, I, that barrel roll thing. Yeah. That was fucking crazy. Thing. Well, I'm like, didn't like one of them bounced off the other one kind of thing. Like it, it seems like the kind of racing I would want to watch. Um, I just haven't been able to track it down to watch full races. I know it's hard to find. I want yeah. to watch it as well. It's They're really incredible vehicles. My, my mm-hmm. issue is I have YouTube TV right now, so I can't even watch my local sports teams because of all the dumb stuff with that. So uh, I can watch, I can watch the EPL team that I follow easier than I can watch my local teams. Got a VPN that man. Yeah. yeah I, I don't know. I, know. I just, I was trying to do the right thing. <laughs> to be honest, I was trying to lower my cost. That's another service that I have to add. <laughs> Seriously. Yeah, they're, 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 they're great rigs. We talked, I was for a different show that I was developing pre, pre-COVID that got COVIDed. Um, I was talking to, to uh, the marketing team for Extreme and they were fantastic to work with. Um, so those are all like spec vehicles, right? Spec electric. Yeah. They look pretty cool though, because they, they look like yeah. Dakar style rigs. Like, yeah, they're like they're like those local motors, like rally fighters, kind of you know tackle anything at very high speeds, kind of look. So, and it's and it's actual like major teams, like Andretti United Autosport is one of the teams. Like, yep. I think the black one with Teal's Lewis Hamilton it is own team. Yep. And then Ro- um, Rossberg. Yeah, one. Nico's got one too. Nico's right? involved. Yep. Is this Utah? Yeah, they're um, they're pulling from some pretty heavy hitters there. They have all kinds of stuff. I like it. Yeah, I don't know. I'm, yeah, I'm still, still trying to track down a way to watch, like a way to watch it live. Every time I think about like an off road or four wheel drive minded racing thing, I just go back to stadium super trucks love those things it's so good there was it is i think good. i mean talk about spectacle yeah. seriously that's it exists Absolute for that spectacle. and that alone my favorite i think my favorite part of like when that series took off was it didn't take off because it was here in the states it took off because they went to australia and they were like yeah throw ramps on the street yep and australians were like yeah we should do that yeah, they ran on the circuit down there. It was like, okay, who's got beer? That is Stadium Super Trucks is literally hold my beer and watch this. That's the series. Done. ABT. Okay. So, Patrick, what do you have in the pipeline? What's coming up? In terms of shows? Or yeah, in terms of projects, <laughs> terms of shows, everything. Yeah. Uh, we'll see. Got a couple of projects that are. Uh... You know, not to be not to be disclosed. Always dabbling in the the the, the uh, motoring entertainment world. Um, mm-hmm. Sometimes motorsports adjacent. Um, always exciting. Uh, so we'll see. Some kind of <laughs> reviewy, some okay. competition. Okay. Um, yeah, I mean, nothing I can really chit chat chit chat too much about but all uh, right keep it a mystery fair enough yeah and also trying to uh uh develop while working in uh reasons to drive new vehicles so thinking about trying to uh uh trying to find the time to write a piece um and on the way to new york doing a, a grand tour car piece um, which is like our grand tour cars, like really, I mean, really grand tour cars. Cause they're like, they're like more, they're more well-appointed sports cars, but can you really do a tour in them? Mm-hmm. So I was going to throw one of my kids in the back and like try to drive across the country in it and just see how that worked out. Mm-hmm. Sounds, Sounds good. Like you, Sounds like you need an Aston. Yeah. Right. I, I don't know or what Bentley. would be the car for that. I, you know, I agree. The idea I can't, I, I was just staring at one of the McLaren GTs in the street the other day. And I'm like, is that no really seat. a grand no. tour car? You've, I mean, you've come on. three places to go. Aston Martin, Bentley Continental GT or 911 Turbo. Done. 
What's the McLaren GT a GT? I, I like doesn't the have McLaren back seats. Too. And you can't throw. I mean, you can throw a kid well, on like the little the, the, that's cargo how pumping it out there, thing. Though, you know? Like that's the whole point of the GT is it's supposed to be to fill that space. I I'm not disagreeing, but if the a back Mustang seat, GT if a back seat not... has to be up. <laughs> Rolling my eyes over here. Yes, you are. <laughs> uh, <laughs> the problem is they've they've almost become like supercars as well. Like mm-hmm. they're not just a grand tour like no you get an lexus lc 500 because you can get it so that's the thing what is a grand tour this is the I, whole thing so Le- lexus lc 500 part. sounds like a really good one that's a grand tour because it's primarily it's comfortable but it's also a land missile yeah naturally aspirated v8 that yeah. on the highway will hold whatever like speed you probably 1500 want 1500 rpm at 85 I don't know. I mean, realistically, Grand Tour at this point is probably like a Cayenne Turbo Coupe. <laughs> you know, one of yeah, the things everything else like, is going to be like SUV based. With less space than a yeah. normal SUV, but I like I like the McLaren GT because it it looks like a McLaren, but nobody's going to realize that it like it's still fast. Like it's not. I spent my entire childhood wanting a Fox Body Mustang GT, and I just thought forever that GT just meant like better. Mm-hmm. You know, like as a child, I'm like, oh, geez, oh if you put a GT, it's like just the better version of the normal yep. thing. You know, and then uh, you know, you grow and you learn. And you're like, oh, wait, a tour? What? It's like right. it's supposed to be like the, the more luxurious version of it? I don't understand. Like, Why are they calling calling it? Like, and I, I don't think I don't think the automotive industry has reconciled that. No, they yeah. have not. No, I I so, think you'd you'd love the crap out of a Bentley Continental GT. You'd love the crap out of a McLaren GT. I think the LC five hundred is right there too. Yep, I see just, I see LC five hundreds around me. That's how I know that they're. Yeah, they're, they're still they're like from the front three quarters. They're still like a stop you from walking. And go, ooh shit. Like one of the only times I went to a North American Auto Show in Detroit, it was, God, what did Lexus debut that year? It was like the LCRF or something like that. It was some weird multi level. It was not the LFA. The LFA was no, it was the special edition LC 500, that crazy. No, it was like 2012. Oh, Oh, 2012. It couldn't have been an LC. Yeah. Um, it 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 was a hybrid thing and it was a coupe. And I was like, that looks awesome. And then to then see that the LC 500 actually come out and still look like a concept car. Mm-hmm. Like it's, it looks amazing. It's so crazy. Goofy. When they do that. Or a BMW M8. Mm. M8 could be a lot of fun too. Mate. I never see those things. I've seen. I don't one. think anybody buys them. No, I saw one in green and it had manufactured plates. I was like, Oh, I know what that is. I don't think I've ever seen one, honestly, on the road. I thought I saw one, but it was just a, it was just a six. <laughs> same difference different ways to go fast well then you also have the m8 grand coupe because you know the their bmw's naming scheme is just all kinds that of sh- that that yeah that took a nosedive like it's not infinity bad but it's bad <laughs> <laughs> all right well ross is about note, to turn to a pumpkin so yes it is pumpkin o'clock over here Hold on. Uh, I'll wrap it up real fast. You can rate review the show on iTunes. We still have good ratings, which is weird. You can like and subscribe on YouTube. There was a video. If you watched it, cool. If not, there's a video. Go watch it. I posted pictures. Watch the video. Uh, Patrick on social is James Patrick Costello. Is it just Instagram? Yeah, just Instagram. Yeah, good. Stay off that. I'm on Twitter, but only as a consumer, not as a Yeah, don't don't, don't go on Twitter. Yeah, that's not. (laughs) I just get mad. I get madder and madder. Uh, you can follow uh, Hooniverse, the Hooniverse on Twitter, the Real Hooniverse on Instagram. You can we will rewrite on Hooniverse and maybe also on the Drive. You have other places where you can. Yeah, I wrote yeah. things for the find, Drive. Find Chris on other places. <laughs> maybe maybe another website that's car automotive themed as well. Um, follow Ross at No, not like the one from Friends. Okay, I had to do it in my head to make sure I did it right, even though I read it. So, yep. uh, and I'm at Overlanding Dad. And that's it. That's the show. We're done.
That's it. And and if you feel like you've missed out because you haven't seen Trucknet and we talked about it quite a lot. Yeah. Um, I, I did hear that they were going to put it on and this I don't know if this is true or not, but uh, uh, on Discovery Plus, all Sweet. the episodes are going to live live there on Discovery Excellent. Plus. So I'm Googling real fast to see if I can confirm. Uh, maybe. If you have Discovery Plus, if you're one of those people, it may be a way to see the show. <laughs> if you don't want to pay for it. Do the thing. Watch the show. Yeah, no, it, it's that, good fun. It is fun worth watching. <laughs> yeah, it's it looks like about as much fun as you can have. It was a lot of fun so, to make. Yeah. That's kind of the best shows to make. That. Yeah. <laughs> All right, that's it. That's so, the show. Cool.